Alright, what's going on guys? George here and today we're going to be working on the 240SX once again. So before this, I actually filmed stuff a couple months ago that was me installing a catch can on the 240 and the installing an intake plenum spacer. Um, I just kind of like did them super quickly, didn't like film that much stuff because it was kind of cold out. I just wanted to get it done. It wasn't that interesting. Uh, so we installed a catch can. So the intake plenum spacer is supposed to make it, the motor make a little more power and a little more torque. Um, I don't really think it's a gimmick, like I think people see real results. I don't know if it's something you really feel, but I think it coupled with other mods kind of add up to something. So here's just the footage of me doing that. So we got the uh, intake plenum spacer here. We're gonna go ahead and throw it in. We got the catch can all plumbed up. Um, I don't know, we'll start taking things off, see what happens. So we just pulled the intake plenum up and there is a huge amount of oil residue on it. Like this is all oil right here. It's just like, mm, that's really nice. So the hope is now that we have a uh, catch can, we might not get so much oil collecting in the intake. So we just did a quick wipe down of the visible oil residue. You can see the stark difference between the right and the left. Obviously this one's clean, this one's not. I mean, I'm sure all the real gunk is like in each runner, which you can kind of see. Uh, so we're gonna clean this side, then we're gonna do a quick wipe down of this upper area because it looks pretty gross too. So we're not pulling it off because there are some coolant lines in the way and it would kind of just be more work than it's worth. So we're gonna go ahead and clean this thing up and get the spacer in. All right, so we got it cleaned up. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and reuse this lower gasket. It doesn't look like it's torn or anything. Uh, we're just gonna make sure everything's clean. There's nothing underneath it from when we were cleaning it out uh, of crud. And then we're gonna go ahead and put the spacer on and then some RTV that goes between this surface and the spacer. All right, what's up guys? Today we're gonna finally install something I ordered about a month and a half ago. I ordered a set of JP fiberglass fenders. Um, turns out they ship from the Dominican Republic. Took a really long time, but they're finally here. Uh, we're gonna see how the fitment is on them. I got like an origin type three style fender. Um, I don't know, they were decently cheap relative to anything else you could buy, which probably means they're not gonna fit great and probably gonna crack really easily because it's super thin fiberglass, but we'll see. Um, they just came. Here they are. The box was absolutely destroyed when I caught it. In other news, I think that the fenders are not destroyed. Just taking a look, this is what our fitment looks like. The factory fenders, we have a bunch of camber, um, so we're probably gonna have to get a, um, strut hat offset kick i know gk tech makes one that like moves it over a little bit because i really am not in love with all the camber that i have here also the stretched higher i'm not really a fan of that either but in any case we're gonna go ahead and throw that fender on and see how it looks so we got the fenders on the car still haven't painted them or anything but as you can see they've really brought out the issue that i'm hopefully going to be fixing and that is that the front tires have a ton of camber and are very sunk in and ideally i'd like to have almost zero camber up front um and the tire be more flush with the fender the coilovers are um the top hats at least the struts adjusted all the way out so this would have the least amount of camber um on the wheel as possible on this side and on this side it's not all the way adjusted over i don't know i think we were playing with the alignment but as you can see there's not really the adjustability we need to get the uh desired amount of camber so what we got here is the gk tech i don't know is it strut hat top relocation kit something like that um and this is the budget version which is like 89 dollars, and then they have like a professional i don't know there's there's one that's like 189 and this one that's 200 and for what i wanted to do this one seemed like the best option the thing that i guess makes it budget and the other ones don't um you have to use like a hole saw and cut right here to move this over i guess on the other version it just pushes it down so far that this piece goes underneath here um so i don't really care about cutting it it's not like the strut towers are perfect anyway um so we're gonna go ahead get that installed on the car and then we're gonna go ahead maybe uh i really want to get different front tires on here that aren't so stretched so i can actually get the fitment up front i want um the steering feel up front i want and the grip up front but i think for now we're just gonna um install these see how we can adjust um the camber and then if we have to trim i assuming we're going to have to trim this huge lip off the inside of the fender to 
fit on the tire. We're replacing this piece here, which sat on like this. And we had this, these uh, two holes back here with the bolts in them. And now we're going to this, which has these holes. So we're going all the way over here. So definitely gonna be a lot of movement in the wheel. Um, I think before we tighten everything down, we should probably get a feel for it and see if it's even in the right spot. But I guess the other thing is we don't actually have to go this deep because the... Um, that would just look nice. Whatever. Oh, wait. It's like a really all right, it's dead. <laughs> no, this is not the most destructive. It's gonna like go. Um, I would cut. Uh, it's gonna suck because it's gonna catch on that really hard. All right, just go. No, it'll be. The bit broke. I got it on film. <laughs> fender on we got it bolted up in a couple places the fitment is pretty trash on them i will say like wow it looks so much worse on camera this side is bad that this, was fine. uh they're just the wrong shape i guess i don't know i'm sure if we worked at it harder we could get them to fit better also my car is a little bent and the doors are messed up but fitment's not really perfect but i don't know we'll work on it we're definitely gonna have to cut these huge lips out of the inside because the tire would hit them um so we're gonna have to work on that. Also, probably you're gonna paint them. Also, I think That's that side of the car is just higher up too. I don't know. We're gonna do that. Now we're gonna go ahead and try and get the hood on. Uh, after we did this plenum spacer, which gave us more power, uh, we had the issue where the hood really didn't close. So uh, we have these small spacers here that we're going to put on both sides and see if that allows the hood to close. So I went ahead and cut this little lip off the fender. This is the passenger side one. I don't know, I could clean it up a little bit, which I probably will right there, a little over there, but I cut the lip out. You can compare that to the driver's side. As you can see, that's a huge lip right here. It has like a good inch and a half. I'm gonna cut this one off and then we can compare them outside and cut this one off as well. So you can see here, we got that lip and then here it's cut off. We just wanna get rid of this so we won't have any tire clearance issue. So right now, my outside of my tire is pretty much flush with the uh, outside of the fender. So if I went through my entirety of my suspension travel, I would make heavy contact with that. And since it's fiberglass, it would probably just crack the fender or where it's mounted and move. Or, I don't know, easier to just have it cut out. You don't have to run into all those issues later on. So when I was editing this, I realized there was a lot of stuff I left out that I kind of forgot I left out. And it doesn't really make sense at all if I don't explain it. So... After I swapped the VQ into the car, it really, it has just like much shorter gear ratios, not much, but it has shorter gear ratios than a KA Trans, and it, the VQ only revs to 6,500 RPM. So when you couple those things together, you have some pretty short gears. And in most cases, this is pretty good, but I kind of felt like where I drift at Thompson, mostly on their skid pad, I felt like I was, um, when I had the two Ford, or the K in the car when it was stock and when it was boosted, I was in second gear and I was pretty happy. I wasn't hitting limiter really. It was a really happy medium gear. Um, you can spin the tires and also go through the slower sections and pretty much not shift. But now that I have the VQ, um, your wheel speed in second gear is a lot shorter with this trans. So much so that for one part of the course you need to be in third and the other part you need to be in second. This is only really a problem for me. Most of the people who drift 350Zs don't have this problem because their second gear is a lot longer because I think a 350Z is like a 352 or 353, something like that. Uh, rear diff ratio compared to the um, 240 which has like a 408 so that's a much shorter gear and I think that results in maybe like 10 or 12 miles an hour in uh, wheel speed that you lose in second gear uh, which doesn't sound like that much but that's enough that like someone who has a 350z can drift the whole course in second gear they're not hitting limiter but they're also not bogging and me being in second gear uh, for one part and then having to shift to third and kind of bogging in third on the other part. So my solution to this, which seemed like the easiest option, was to um, swap out the ring and pinion in my diff. So I bought an S15 ring and pinion, which I believe is like a 369 ratio, and this would have bring 
brought my gear ratio closer to the stock 350Z1. But as you'll see, when I tried to do that, I ran into some problems. Just pulled the uh, drain plug out of the diff. We're getting a little bit of uh, metal in the oil. A lot of, a lot of it. I don't know. I bought this diff already welded. I don't know. I think there's normally a little metal in the. That's not a little diff. Brush. Sandy. So we just pulled the rear cover off my diff, and we're gonna be putting the I have S15 um, ring and pinion in it, which is a 369 rear ratio as opposed to mine, which is a 408. So in theory, this will give us a longer gearing ratio. So we'll see how it goes. We'll let you know when we mess something up. So I've been trying to get these half shafts out of my diff for like an hour, maybe 30 minutes yesterday, another 10 minutes today, and hitting with the hammer so much. I'd be surprised if I haven't actually bent them. But I I figured there was there's something wrong. And I think what has happened, because I bought this diff welded, I think that someone must have welded the half shafts in because they are exposed in here. So if you put the weld too deep, I imagine you could weld the axle shafts into like the center casing. So there's no way to pull this diff apart. So I can't put the new <sighs> ring and pinion in. editing this video after I did all that and after I went to another drift event and after going to the drift event I kind of realized some things about the car and I kind of decided I want to leave the gearing as it is because I would kind of didn't want to be switching between second and third before because I kept miss shifting I had a bunch of issues shifting but this last drift event I had no issue shifting and I think that was the result of me driving a car that was a manual around more than just the 240 which I drove a couple times a year at, for drift events and not really any street driving or just um, anything like that because like it wasn't like really natural sh instinct for me to like Shift like if that makes sense like I knew how to drive stick. I don't have any issues. I didn't like stall all the time, but just Being able to do like the motion of shifting hitting the clutch and going back to the gas and make not like just jamming into a gear And just like kind of like, almost slowing down internally and just being able to actually do the right shifts um, resulted in me not really having the issues that I normally had. So being able to shift between second and third was actually really helpful, especially when I was going on the road course. Um, I don't think I would have been able to do the track with the S15 gearing in the car. I think second would have been too short, and I think third would have actually been too long for the road course. So I was really happy that I ended up leaving it because third and second was actually perfect for there. This kind of brings me to why I want to leave the gearing. I think that having the shorter gears, especially with the... Um, car only making, I don't know, it probably made 280 crank when it was new. Maybe it makes like 200 wheel, 220 wheel now. With only that much power, I think that having the shorter gearing is more of an advantage. Even though it's not perfect everywhere, I think it's a, the best happy medium between being able to be in one gear and also being able to have the right gear with less power for different tracks. And I think as I start going to more tracks and start learning how to drive more, um, having the option of... Maybe I have to shift a little bit more, but also being able to use the power I have to um, drive in different tracks will be really helpful. So if you guys did enjoy this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Um, I have a lot more time now that I'm home from school because of the coronavirus. Uh, so I'm going to be working on the car a lot more. Um, I'm really excited. It's going to be getting warm out. Nice to work on cars again in the springtime. I got a lot of stuff coming for the car. I'm going to be doing a lot of work on it in the next couple of months and hopefully getting it ready for this upcoming drift season after all the coronavirus stuff passes by, hopefully sooner rather than later. But I'm just really excited to get the car all dialed in, get it exactly how I want it. Um, so in between drift events, I'm not replacing things, trying to fix things, make things work. And I'm working on improving the car, improving my driving um, and getting better, getting more experience and hopefully progressing to the next level of drifting as opposed to just going out on a skid pad every couple of months and getting on some more tracks and traveling around. So if I ever do want to mess with gearing in the future, um, the S15 gearing is an option, doing 350Z gearing is an option. Um, and if you guys do have any other thoughts about that, make sure to leave a comment, let me know what you're thinking. Um, if you guys have dealt with anything like this before, do you have any ideas? I know I was playing around a little bit with um, maybe some different tire sizes to get a longer gear, a shorter gear. Um, just with the size of the wheel and the size of the uh, sidewall, but if you guys have any thoughts, of course, let me know, um, and I'll see you in the next one.